Hello, I'm Antonio Mora. This is the News and News.com Day in Brief on Thursday, February 21st at about 6.30 p.m. Empire actor Jesse Smollett turned himself in to Chicago police early this morning on a felony charge of disorderly conduct in filing a false police report for allegedly staging a racist and homophobic attack. His lawyers insist they will mount an aggressive defense. At his first court hearing, an angry judge recognized that Smollett is entitled to the presumption of innocence but set bond at $100,000 and described the evidence against the actor as outrageous. Smollett posted bond and has been released. At a powerful press conference earlier in the day, Chicago's police superintendent, who like the judge is African American, talked about how Smollett had smeared his city, emotionally saying, Smollett took advantage of the pain and anger of racism to promote his career. I'm left hanging my head and asking why. Why would anyone, especially an African-American man, use the symbolism of a noose to make false accusations? Another angry judge slammed a defendant today in a high-profile case. This time, a federal judge threatened Trump pal Roger Stone with jail after he posted a picture of her on Instagram with what appeared to be crosshairs behind her head. Stone, who was already under a gag order, apologized profusely but unconvincingly, and the judge questioned whether he'd learned his lesson. She allowed him to go free but ordered Stone to not speak publicly about the investigation or the case or any of the participants. Not long after Vladimir Putin threatened to respond to any deployment of missiles by the U.S. in Europe by targeting the U.S. itself, not just the countries where the missiles are deployed, the Russian leader said he's ready for another Cuban missile crisis if the U.S. is foolish enough to want one. He also claimed Russia has the edge when it comes to a first nuclear strike. Putin's rhetoric is dangerously irresponsible, but we have yet to hear a peep out of President Trump on this, even though he made time to tweet about Smollett. Let's hope the White House is taking action behind the scenes because there is no way Ronald Reagan would have been silent in the face of such threats. More news outlets are confirming that Special Counsel Robert Mueller may deliver his report on the Russian meddling investigation to Attorney General Barr as early as next week. It's unlikely we'll see the full report because the rules don't require it. Barr has committed, though, to releasing what he could, but don't hold your breath hoping to hear even the basics next week. Even if the report is submitted then, it will take a while for the DOJ to write its summaries. The battle over fraud in the congressional election in North Carolina's 9th District took a dramatic turn today. The results had not been certified, and today, the apparent victor, Republican Mark Harris, reversed himself and called for a new election. North Carolina officials had found a coordinated, unlawful, and substantially resourced absentee ballot scheme that favored Harris. He had maintained he knew nothing about the scheme, but his own son, a federal prosecutor, testified he had warned his dad. No word yet on when the new election will take place or whether Harris will run again. Winterstorm Petra has made a mess of the weather in 39 states, closing schools, canceling thousands of flights, and even shutting down the federal government in D.C. on Wednesday. Now a major snowstorm is slamming the southwest, even dropping rare snow on Las Vegas, even some parts of Los Angeles. Some severe thunderstorms could also give the south and the Ohio Valley another round of miserable weather going into the weekend. In an alarming story, USA Today conducted a review of 900 yearbooks from the 70s and 80s. It found a stunning number of universities published images of blatant racism. No politicians were identified, but the paper's own editor had to apologize for designing a yearbook page where students used black makeup to look like boxer Mike Tyson and actress Robin Givens. Pope Francis today opened a four-day conference at the Vatican on the sexual abuse of children by priests. It began with searing testimony from the victims. The pontiff demanded concrete and efficient measures, not just simple and obvious condemnations. Francis offered 21 proposals, some of which would require new laws. Nearly 200 Catholic leaders are tasked with addressing one of the worst crises in the church's history. A former head of the Venezuelan intelligence service, who is currently a congressman for dictator Nicolás Maduro's Socialist Party, is urging the military to turn against the regime ahead of a showdown Saturday over Maduro's refusal to allow humanitarian aid into the country. Hugo Carvajal accused Maduro of killing hundreds to stay in power and asked the generals how they could be so inhuman, so hypnotized, that they would stop the aid from entering the starving country. 
The head of the FDA is warning that the federal government may intervene if states continue to allow vaccine exemptions. A series of outbreaks of measles have sounded the alarm about the problem. The most recent in the Pacific Northwest has hit Washington State's Clark County on the Oregon border especially hard. 62 cases have been confirmed. Washington is one of 17 states that allow philosophical belief exemptions from vaccines. About 7% of kids in Clark County had claimed exemptions. One of college basketball's most exciting players, Duke's Zion Williamson, had to leave less than a minute into a game when one of his Nike shoes collapsed, spraining his knee. Number one, Duke, then proceeded to lose badly to number eight, North Carolina. Nike is also a loser. Its share price lost 1% today after the projected number one pick in next year's NBA draft had his shoe explode. Peter Tork, the guitarist for the pop sensation band and TV show The Monkees, has passed away at age 77. The made-for-TV band had some huge hits that remain popular today. The two surviving members of the band, Mickey Dolenz and Michael Nesmith, posted tributes to Tork, saying their hearts were broken. Finally, a tortoise, believed to be extinct for more than 100 years, has been rediscovered on a remote volcanic island in the Galapagos. The Fernandina tortoise is the only one ever found alive. We have all the stories and much more updated around the clock seven days a week on newsandnews.com where you will find all you need to know in one place. Please subscribe to our YouTube channel by clicking on the right of your screen just below this video. And please follow us on Facebook at Real News and News and me on Twitter at Amora TV. I'll see you again tomorrow.